Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Rock, Rockford Ordnance. Bringing you something, uh, I don't know if it's so cool. You know, yeah, I walked in the gun shop and I was gonna buy a Taurus TX-22 and a uh, G3C. And they had them both in stock, great prices, $2.99 a piece, and that was the plan. I could, I, I really want a 22 auto that feeds, which my Glock doesn't. So that'd be, I hear these things work great. And I really wanted to do some reviews on uh, the Taurus, uh, that nine. I just uh, think it'd be a nice gun. It's in, inexpensive and just wanted one. Anyhow, I'm debating. And at the last second, a guy says, hey, do you got one of these? And he pulls it out and I went, no. Not really that familiar with it. He went over it and I thought, ah, that thing's pretty cool, I'll take it. So I get home and it was one of those snap decisions and I haven't even shot it yet. Usually I'm so excited I run right out. I just haven't even shot it yet. And I don't know why I'm not that excited because it, it is kind of cool. Now that I got a few things on it, let's show you what I got here. So this is a Ruger PC charger in nine millimeter and I'm kind of a sucker for these little sub guns right so when he pulled it out it sure looked a lot more interesting than a 22 you know what I mean anyhow I still haven't shot it yet uh, while I was waiting for my uh, my background check to come back because I got delayed as usual um, I ordered up this brace by F uh, SB tactical and I put that on and it was cool it doesn't come with any sights, so I uh, got this uh, Romeo 5 and put that on, and now things are getting a little cooler. And it comes, here, let me show you, it comes with two magwells. So the one that comes in it is the uh, Ruger magwell, and it takes the Ruger mags, and they fit well and all, but just came with the small one. So. It also comes with a Glock magwell, and of course I put that in right away and got some Glock 32 rounders. And hey, now we're looking like something, right? I mean, super small package to begin with. Uh, and you know, with the foldable brace. Oh, one other thing, it uh, does take AR standard furniture and it had a Ruger pistol grip on it. We put a Magpul K grip like I put on everything because that Ruger was just too big an angle for your wrist. So now I got really comfortable. I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. So now I'm kind of excited to shoot it. But uh, maybe I thought, maybe it's just psychologically that there's so little nine millimeter ammo out there. And I've got some, but I don't want to waste it. I, I probably have more than most, but uh, still, I want to hang on to it, right? So I guess we'll get it out and shoot it, but there's a couple other cool things about it. And this is kind of really what made me buy it spur of the moment. Uh, when it's cocked open like that, you can hit this little lever down here and ka-ching. Yeah, it's a takedown, just like their 1022. So little teeny weeny barrel, six inch, whatever it is. Uh, Four and a half, I think, something like that. And uh, it takes down. So now you've got a super small package that you can put just about anywhere. I mean, with the mag out of this thing, the stock folded, the barrel off. Look at that. I can damn near get a holster for it, right? But uh, pretty cool. Plus there's something about locking these barrels in. It's like uh, the old movies, you know, when the guy would put the suppressor on there. Chink, and it's that easy. It's locked in. Um, some people have complained about them coming from the factory with it a little loose. You can just turn the knob here and tighten it up. Uh, some have had it too tight, they're hard to get off, but I set mine where it goes together pretty easy. That fits very tight, so sometimes you gotta wiggle it a little to get it out or in, but you just get it in and it's kind of spring loaded from here and then over and it locks in. Simple as that. The brace has a detent that keeps it folded to the left here and uh, you can just fling it up and she's good to go, right? 
has a reversible charging handle so uh, it reciprocates with the bolts so when you're deciding what side to put it on take that into consideration but uh, I left it on this side I put it over on the left for a little while because that just seemed more intuitive right um, when you're holding the gun and you want to reload uh, and then charge it or whatever you could because I'm an AK guy reach over and do that but it just seemed easier to charge from the right or from the left rather however when I did that and folded the brace it hit the charging knob and it made the brace stick out about that far not that big a deal but I just thought it was better like that so we'll leave it like that and charge it like real men right anyhow um, what I've noticed just playing with it first of all although this is a chassis system okay there's basically an upper part to it and a lower and that's how you change the mag wells you take the upper off and you drop the mag well in then put this back on clamps it all in there nice and tight and it works good um, but a couple things you know you think well it takes AR furniture it's probably a lot like an AR well no it's got a cross bolt safety and the mag release which is ambidextrous is right here now it comes installed on the left side so you know if you were shooting like this you can hit the button drop it out and I believe they do drop let's see yeah they do so um, I've left it there for now you know it'd be one thing it'd be nice if you could reach it from here somehow uh, eject it and drop your next mag in as it is now I guess as you come down you could just eject it and drop grab your next mag and go the other weird thing is there's no other way to close the bolt other than bolt hold open by the way other than charging it like this pulling back and letting it fly there's no uh, bolt carrier release um, there is a bolt carrier stop right here so if you pull it back push that up it'll lock it back so what does all this remind you of it reminds you of the 1022 right 1022 charges the same way um, mag release is different but uh, you get it that's underneath on the 1022s but they have the cross bolt safety like this and all uh, and their takedown models of course so there's a lot of cues here from the takedown or 1022 um, they, it's also, you know, essentially the midget version of their pistol caliber carbine. So, interestingly enough, you could take the 16 inch barrel off the Ruger PC carbine and install it on this and vice versa. However, one would get you in a, a bit of trouble for having an SBR. Uh, but yeah, the same mechanisms, so you could technically do that and who knows maybe Ruger has some plans for different barrels or what have you I don't know uh, maybe you could do something different calibers that type of thing and you've got the uh, mag inserts so you could change mags comes with this hand stop that's pretty cool and the barrel is threaded from the factory it has a thread protector on it so a suppressor will screw right on and that's cool too so why did I get this thing spur of the moment well probably because you know it's a little nine sub gun which if you've seen my videos with the scorpions I just love those things and then this takedown was just kind of cool but after I bought it I'm like well it's cool and all but once you do that or take it off and show someone and go look how cool this is I don't know if it's all that big a deal I mean, is it that big a deal to store four more inches somewhere in a briefcase or a bag or whatever? I don't know. You tell me. It, it just seemed like a cool combination of things. And uh, I don't know. It, <laughs> that's just what I did. So maybe I will enjoy it a whole lot more when I get it out uh, and shoot it. And maybe we'll do some comparisons with the Scorpion as well. 
Right off the top of my head, I can tell you uh, the makeup of this pistol versus, say, a Scorpion, it's a lot heavier. And why is that? Uh, really, it's because this is all metal. Ruger has done very well over the years and has basically perfected um, cast parts and uh, investment casting, I'd, I'd add. They've managed to do it in a way that others just can't quite do as well. You know, they don't, uh, they don't wear, they don't crack, there's no weak points really. They do a really nice job and it's a heavy gun because of that. But that being said, it feels like quality. Uh, nice and chunky, you got some M-locks here on the sides and all. So you could add a flashlight or something like that. The lower here uh, is polymer. So, you know, that's kind of cool. It, I could only imagine if it was all metal, it would be crazy heavy. But it's basically a chassis system gun, you know, the action sets in there. They did give you a couple QD uh, mounts too. So you got one on each side, which is really nice because when I fold the brace, I would use this side anyways. I always have my sling going over the top because it holds it in closer, right? And uh, yeah, kind of neat. It's grown on me since I added the few things I've added. Definitely the K-grip. The other grip was just too much of an angle. I don't know if I have it here somewhere. I don't know what I did with it, guys. No big deal. But uh, yeah, so thought I'd bring you this before we shot it, tell you uh, my story and how I'm not just all that enthralled with it, and then we'll see if the story changes after I take it to the range. Got this nice pick rail. Uh, this was basically the only uh, optic I could find for it at the moment that was relatively inexpensive, and uh, I haven't had a SIG optic before. Maybe just uh, for the simple reason that uh, why do I want another gun company's name on a different branded gun? I just, uh, that always struck me as strange. And usually when a company is making things they don't specialize in, you know, Six Hour to me is a gun company, not an optic company. So I always went with, uh, when it came to these uh, primary arms or something like that. So we'll see, it, it seems to work fine. It's got a wake up feature and a go to sleep feature and all of that. Uh, came with the high mount and the low mount, so if I'm not enthralled with this and I get rid of it, I can throw it on an AR or something like that. I was thinking this might actually be the uh, first gun I ever bought that I may just never shoot and sell it. And I never thought I'd be that guy where you, you buy, everybody knows somebody buys guns and they sell them before they even shoot them. I, I, did, I never understood that. Um, every firearm I've ever bought has been well researched and looked into and a definite want or add to my collection and this one wasn't. This was a, kind of a spur of the moment thing. So we'll see. If it uh, runs well at all, yeah, why not? I mean, uh, these little pistol caliber, you know, sub guns are so much fun to shoot they're a blast and we were just shooting a heck out of those scorpions before the ammo crisis hit and hopefully we'll be doing it again and this will just be another one to throw in the mix and uh, have friends to uh, can shoot one and whatever so we'll see how it goes uh, i'll let you know you know how things feel and how uh, things work and if I make any changes when we take it out to the range. So be watching for that video to come out. Real quick, I was going to check the trigger pull because I have heard it's kind of stiff and it is, I guess, uh, eh, maybe not, I don't know. Let's see, I'm gonna guess five and a half pounds, six pounds, somewhere in there. Let's see, that's my guess. I have not done this yet, so can you see? We will uh, do it together here. Uh, 
little over six. Let's try it one more time. That's pretty hefty trigger, man. Let's see, one more try. See if we can't grip it further out here. We're kind of cheating a little, but did I cock it? Yep. <laughs> wow, that one went up to almost seven and a half. We got to do that again. Holy moly. Oh, I caught it outside that time. Under five, just under five. So kind of all over the place depending where you put it on the trigger here. But uh, like I said, I said five to six. So yeah, it's in there somewhere. Um, I hear they make some parts for the trigger that work well. I also uh, ran across somewhere they make an extended mag release. I don't know how you would get that far where I could reach it, but might look into some other parts, see what happens. But uh, yeah, there it is. 32 round Glock mags, kind of neat. Originally, I didn't like the angle of this, how it angled back. And maybe that was the angled back grip added some to it. But it looks kind of neat now. I like it, so we'll see. Anyhow, thought I would bring you this real quick, give you an update of what we're gonna have coming out, and then uh, we'll bring you a range report and uh, we'll see what we think. Until then guys, thanks so much. And uh, check out our other uh, stuff, our Facebook, our Instagram. Uh, we've been putting out as many videos as we can, having a good time. And uh, hey, summer's here, so we're gonna get out a lot, lot more. Anyhow, thanks for all the help, guys. This channel exists for you, and uh, we appreciate everything you do. Please check out our live streams. We have a live stream every week, uh, Wednesday nights, uh, usually 7.30 Central Time. We may be switching to Tuesday nights, so check it out. Uh, you usually get a notification if you subscribe, hit the subscribe button or hit the bell button or both, and you will get notifications of that. So once again, guys, thanks very much. And as always, Rockford Ordinance out.